want to learn a new language to connect with other people, want to enhance your job process, want to just travel to a brand new country and be able to communicate with the local people. This, I'm going to explain to you how I learned German and how I'm trying to get better at it. Let's get to it. Went to the Anne Frank house. <laughs> I go for this one though. We found it one when the drought is over. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Justin Banks and this video is all about my journey learning the German language. And right now I'm currently level B2 and I'm trying to get myself up to a level C1 and I'm going to tell you my process and how I was able to make it through this. I've used multiple ways of studies. Some ways worked, some ways didn't. I'm going to focus on all the ways that I have used to get me from a very beginner A1 and all the way up to B2 and my process of trying to get to C1. So let's get started. So living in Germany for about 10 years, I've had my ups and downs with the German language. When I first came, I was very enthusiastic and I jumped up a whole lot, gaining lots and lots of progress. And then I leaned back on speaking English for people and I didn't progress. One day I sat down and decided, you know what, I'm going to go further, take it to a higher level and actually come into the German culture, be part of society. And I sat down and I started studying again. Um, and, it's, and I'm thankful for it. I am well connected, but it's always a chance to get better. I, I work in a German school system, but eventually I want to progress myself higher. In order to, in order to do that, I need to improve my German speaking skills. Uh, so I can end up going to a university track and then teaching in a German public school with two subjects. One, English, of course, and then the second one being math or religion or maybe even sport but i have to do that in the german language so this is my process so the first way i got started by learning the language is probably the easiest one to do is using an app there are so many different types of apps available some you have to pay some that are free but i don't know what type of learning you are some people well, so you know what? I want to go work out and get in shape and then just take whatever shoes they have and start running. There are other people that feel like they have to pay money first, buy new clothes, buy new shoes before they can get to running. It's about the investment. Whatever type of learning you are, you got to figure it out. I started off using the program Duolingo. It was free. And it helped me get started, get my juices going. And it's something that I still continue to do. I'm using it to learn German. I've also used it to learn Spanish and a few words in other languages to support my students of all these different countries and to show them that I am also on a journey. And I love using Duolingo. It's a great app. It's free and it would take you pretty far. It helped me get to at least to about A1. And of course, they designed it so it can take you further, but I think it takes a little bit of motivation as well as it's also limited. You do write a little bit, but you aren't really speaking out in public. But it's a great starting app. The second thing that I would suggest for you to do to start learning a new language, if you had an opportunity to actually visit the country that you want to speak the language, go to it. Or if you meet people that can speak the language that you're trying to learn, speak with those people. When I first came to Germany to live, I met a guy on the street who was selling flowers. And uh, I tried to speak a few words to him in German. And once he heard me speak a few words in German, he just, he turned it on. Long story short is, he ended up becoming one of my best friends at the time. And I went to his shop every day just so he could teach me the German language. So my first goal is just learn it on the streets. Go into the public, talk to people. Just people are interested in learning about your story. And that's a great way to practice. You can tell them about your story. You can tell them about this. Now, the only downside of that is if you're really, really shy and you can't put yourself out there, then that's very, very hard and challenging to do. A lot of my other biggest challenge is I end up talking about the same stuff over and over and over again, talking about the weather, talking about sports. And even though I am comfortable talking about those subjects, sometimes 
it just becomes get very, very repetitive. Then you have to really sit down and start developing deeper relationships with people. If you haven't done that yet or you're afraid to do that, then it's probably hard to do. The other downfall is <laughs> when people find out that I'm American, the number of Germans who want to speak English with me to practice their English and to make things easier for me, oh man, there's so many times the conversation switched to the English language and we talked about America. And me being the person that I am, sometimes I take the easy way out and I just get comfortable and I start speaking English and it just becomes the, the our language that we speak in. Once you develop a common language and you speak with someone, it's hard to switch back to the other language. So when I speak to my family in English, they are used to me speaking English. It's hard for me to go up and be like, you know what, let's speak German now. Because that's the language of choice. That's what's the hard part of with, with my wife and I. Our language that we communicate in is English. So it's very, very difficult, especially after a hard day of work, to then say, you know what, let's sit down and speak German. So if you ever do go into the streets and you have an opportunity to speak German, continue to speak German as much as possible. Don't take the easy way out like I did. Just speak German. And if you have to, speak English. But focus on German. But that's number two. So now, doing Duolingo, going on the streets and talking about these common things helped me get up to A1. Uh, and A2. But really what pushed me over closer to B1 uh, was that I went to a website called DW.com. It's Deutsche Welle, Deutsche Waves.com. It's the translation of German Waves. But it's Deutsche Welle .com. And on our website, they have a list of different programs that you can use. It comes with exercises. They have videos. They have listening. They have vocabulary training. The two programs that I use the most was called Radio D, and then another one uh, uh, was no the one two programs I used the most were called Radio D. It was a listening um, program, but I also had to text the buy so I can read it if I wanted to. <laughs> I just put said a word in Jeremy. It also had to text for me if I wanted to read it. I could download the PDFs, and it, it explained about the language. It, it explained the language. It explained the culture a lot to me. Matter of fact, those probably my favorite stories that I listened to. And it's interesting how I began, and I can understand only a few words, but after a while of listening to it over and over and over again repetitively, uh, repeatedly, um, I really started to pick it up. And now when I listen to it now, it's very good. Uh, one of my favorite stories was the story of Kunig Ludwig. And I used that program. I used their exercises. Of course, now that one is kind of outdated, but they have newer ones on there. The other one I used was called Mission Berlin, and it was very similar to Carmen San Diego where this girl came into Germany, she only could speak English, and uh, she had to talk to people because there was a murder case or something that happened. I don't want to give away the story, but there was a, a situation. Someone was trying to be, someone had gotten killed, and she could only speak English to talk to the police officers. And she had to go through this whole process, and it was about time, basically it was a, a person stuck in a video game or something like that. Anyway, I love their story. It helped me learn a lot. Uh, I used those two programs as well as another one on the website to improve myself up to at least a 2.5. So talking on the street, using Deutsche Welle, the website, and Duolingo got me up to A2. And that's when I joined a German class. So I joined the German class because, well, I am a teacher. I understand the process of being inside of a classroom surrounded by other people that are on your level. So I joined the class. Now, I don't think the teacher was very happy when I joined the class. I joined in the middle of it. But being a teacher myself, um, I understand the, the process of being in a structured environment, right? You're in a structured environment surrounded by people that are learning the language just like you. Uh, so it helps control what you're learning, what you're talking about, and the teacher there is going to give you immediate feedback if you're saying something wrong or ways to make you improve. Uh, you have a lot of social interactions. I am as I am still in contact with a few people from the classes. And then just overall motivation. Um, that carried me over to getting a B1 because when I went into the classroom, I 
started hearing other people speak the language. I started comparing myself. Okay, I know where I am and I know where I need to reach to, right? Because other people in the class are also learning the language. And so they it kind of gave me a perspective of where I actually am in comparison to them. The second thing was that the teacher gave me immediate feedback to correct my mistakes. But he also took the class and he paced it just right so that by the time it was for my exam, I knew enough information. I knew I knew the right information. Even though I think the other programs were able to help me, such as Duolingo, the pace couldn't guarantee, per, I couldn't guarantee that I was going to be ready for the test. And learning the online programs, which I did enjoy, but once again, this was self-learning, and I have never gone through the learning a language process by myself completely, so I wasn't sure if I was going down a prep path. And the third thing that made a really, really difference was, was compared to learning on the street, it was, yeah, I'm learning on the street, but am I actually in range of subjects necessary for me to be ready for the exam? Also, was I working on my reading and my writing? See, in the classroom, I was able to work on all four reading, writing, speaking, and hearing, and hearing different examples, right? But then also, from the social aspects, I was able to make some friends uh, in this class as well. So I met people that were going through a similar situation from me. I got to hear their stories, and I had a chance to connect with them. Now, out of the other three ways I'll talk about learning are all free. So this is one where I did have to pay to learn. And it was okay because it did give me the structure that I needed. And it helped me get to B1. I passed the exam, which most people, that's like to, to come into Germany, you have to make at least a B1 exam. Uh, if you, I, I'm not going to say you guarantee, but one of my requirements was that I had to make B1. And then I took the living in German test where it's about the German culture. And that helped guide me to make sure I was learning the questions, uh, learning the correct information. And I passed easily with those things in mind. Now, continue my story. After I passed the exam, I stopped learning German completely. I went back to speaking English full time. And I did that for a few years. And then I decided that I wanted to take my levels of learning higher. Now, the sad thing about this is, is that you will always find German courses to get up to level B1. That is the necessary level for most people, and most people will take those classes up to B1. But after that, it's harder to find classes for B2, C1, and C2. Uh, normally, it seems like those are during the day, or you have to pay for a private tutor, which can be expensive. Um, and yeah, or it just... The time-wise, it just doesn't work for me, even though they do have in the evening. I have kids now, and so I just can't go take a class two or three times a week. No, my kids need me. My wife needs me, so it's something that threw me off. So I'm coming down to the next way that I started self-learning. I decided to go to my local library, and inside my local library, they have tons and tons of books. Tons and tons of material. I don't know why I didn't think about that in the, in the first place. I always would take my children to the library just to get books. You know what I started doing? I started reading their books. I started using their listening program to learn German. But then I went over to the section to say, okay, once again, I need to have something a little bit more structured. I need to have a self-learning. And look, a book, German C1. This book is designed to help me for the C1 test. And if you go to your local library, I'm pretty sure they probably have at least 15 different books all the way up to A1 to B1. And the bigger the library, they might even have material up for it all the way up to C2. And not just in German. They might have it in uh, French. They have My library has French, Spanish, uh, Russian. I think they have, they have hundreds of books in my library. And for the people that are just beginning... They have translations in uh, Arabic, Arabic. They have translations in Dutch. They have translation in Spanish. Just before you get to A1, that's the very beginning. Now, once you get to A1, it is expected that you will only or mainly speak in German. So, I have this book. I'm practicing now. I'm going to try to get my C1. Hopefully, I'll make it. And then, 
uh, and then C2. And then I better go into the German university and further my education so I can be a full-time teacher and hopefully be umpted before I turn 42. But that being said, this is how I learned the German language. And I will put the links down below of all the programs I use. And hey, now I would say there are other online programs. I'm not saying they're good. I'm not saying they're bad. I just never use them. There is one program that I did use and I had to pay for it. And it was terrible. So I'm not going to put it down though because it was years ago. So, But I'm not going to mention it. I'm just going to tell you that not everything works. Don't believe the hype and everything. But there are some good ones. And if I can get in contact with one that it may be sponsoring me, I will try it out and I will give it a, re a review on it. But for now, these are the ways that I have learned to improve my German language and continue it. With that being said, peace.